I was threatened with rape, anything that you could think of. I was thrown my way the day that I had my name branded with murder. It does not matter whose hand held the gun. Everyone who joined in committing the crime is equally guilty. If one person commits a crime and others knowingly join in, joint enterprise allows them to be held responsible. For years, these families have been campaigning against law, which sees people convicted of assault or murder, Justice! even if they didn't strike the fatal blow. I got 260 messages of hate mail towards my, just myself. I was the, the mother of a monster, and how could I forgive myself for bringing her up like that? I was at uni studying criminology and law in the hopes that I'd become a barrister. At the moment, we're really strongly pushing for mental health changes. She just helps so many people. She's infectious and people were drawn to her. She was talking in Parliament at a very young age. Kimmy is overly trusting. I've said to her, you want to be a bit more guarded about people and situations, because I never liked Lauren. We met when both of our ex-partners went to prison. Both our boyfriends at the time um, had allegedly committed a crime. We felt immediately so close because of what we was about to go through. Something in me, just whether it's intuition or just me being a dad, I knew that there was something there. The only thing that we genuinely didn't do together was work. So I would lend her my car for her to get about and do whatever she needed to do whilst I was at work because I wasn't going to be using it. I had had a normal day, I'd had a good day at work, and then it was just the decision that we'd go out for drinks and that we'd have cocktails and we'd just have a really good night. We were heading to this like shishiri dessert place. I didn't find it odd that we were going to another place to collect them both because he'd gone home to get changed for the night. It just kind of made sense that he'd met up with his friend before he'd come to see us. We were lying in bed and Des said, can you hear the yeah. noise outside? I got, I heard a banging on the side gate, like someone was trying to get in the house. So I obviously got up, opened the bedroom window. I actually shouted, uh, what do you think you're doing? And it was, uh, it's armed police, open up. I said, Des, I can see the red dot. I went downstairs and I opened the door. It felt like a hundred police and guns all pointed at me. When they came in, we all had to sit on the sofa all together. We all had a gun pointed at us each. I was told, go and get some clothes for your daughter. So I went upstairs and got some random clothes. Then, God, and I handed my daughter over to them. I'll never be able to forgive myself. I started to find out what had happened when I was arrested. I just knew that there'd been some form of mix-up and that if I told the truth, the nightmare would be very quickly over. In the police interview, I was advised that Ty and Sean had stolen a vehicle to specifically use that car um, to go and commit a shooting in broad daylight. I was charged with murder. I called my mum. She said, Mum, I'm being charged with murder. And that's when I um, collapsed and I threw my phone and I started screaming. I just could not believe it. I just could not. I 
I was held in the cells. Uh, so my solicitor, he said, this is something that has to be referred to the Crown Court. So at this time, you are remanded. And then I went down and went to prison. So association alone is not enough to prove that somebody was involved in the commission of an offence. There has to be evidence that they intend it that offence to be committed so that they encouraged or assist that offence to be committed. The prosecution's case in terms of joint enterprise was that we had all conspired and all facilitated the murder of the victim. They didn't specifically say how we did it or why we did it. Their point was we all four of us knew that there was going to be a murder. They tried to suggest that I had text messages on my phone that I had deleted to prove that I'd been in contact with certain people about the crime. But when it came down to it, it showed that I hadn't deleted any of my messages. I hadn't removed a single thing off my phone. I had never been in contact with my two male co-defendants. When my legal team submitted no case to answer, it was on the grounds of there is no evidence against my client. It's all, you know, opinions rather than matter of fact. The judge agreed um, and I was acquitted. When I was in prison, I almost accustomed myself to never leaving. So I went into a very dark mindset of, this is my life and it's going to be my life for a long time. I can't get that time back. I got 260 messages of hate mail towards my, just myself the day she was remanded. It was out there. We were targeted straight away. I was the, the mother of a monster, and how could I forgive myself for bringing her up like that? I received hundreds, potentially thousands, of messages on all of my social media accounts. I was threatened with rape. Anything that you could think of was thrown my way the day that I had my name branded with murder. This whole ordeal has completely changed me. Getting acquitted, it didn't save me. I was given a life sentence the day that it was released in the media that I was remanded for the crime. They were happy to send her for 35, but you couldn't have the gall to come and say you were wrong. <laughs> Sorry. I want to be a criminal defence barrister. Uh, which I know one day I will, and I would like to see that the law is changed, but also that cases are looked at once the law's changed, as opposed to just changing it and hoping that no one will be affected the way that I've been in the future.